Sanbanu friends! Are you ready for another adventure to Mongolia? Glad to see you back again this week. We've been having so much fun learning from the people and culture of Mongolia about how God's love is so big and so vast. So far, we've learned that God's love is so big that He knows us, each and every one of us. He knows the people of Mongolia, even in the big capital city of Ulaanbaatar. And he knows each and every one of the people in the big city of New York, New York City, where you are. He also knows each and every person on the entire planet. The Bible tells us that he knows the hairs on our head and counts them. We've learned that God's love is so big that we can trust in him. Remember when we met Abata, the eagle huntress, and how she was able to train her eagle to come and it trusted her? That's how God's love is for us. We can trust Him, and He provides for us. We also learn that God's love is so big that we are a part of God's family. And God's family means helping one another, being kind to one another, and like we talked about last week, even sometimes doing things we don't always like to do, like chores. How did you do with your chores this week? Did you help your mom and dad at home? Well. That's actually what we're going to talk about today. Sometimes we face challenges. Sometimes we have difficulty doing things. Maybe it's things like chores that we don't always like to do, or maybe it's things that we can't always control, difficulties that we face. And today we're going to learn how God's love is so big that He's with us even when we face challenges. Let's take a look at the story of Narvala, who's a Mongolian boy learning to race horses. Let's see what challenges he's, he's facing and how they're similar, maybe different to the challenges that we face. Today, we're meeting Nargula. He's 11 years old and has been racing horses since he was eight. This is where he lives with his family. They're animal herders. Nargulan and his friend are going out to ride their horses. They need to practice for the Nadam Festival horse race coming up tomorrow. This is his horse, Kulan. Nargulan spends lots of time with his favorite horse. He takes really good care of him by brushing him every day and cleaning his hooves. For special occasions, he even braids his horse's tail before races. Many Mongolians don't use saddles when they ride. They use a riding style called bareback. It can be a little tricky to get on, but they've been riding this way for hundreds of years. The Mongolian people have a special bond with horses since they depend on them so much. There's an old saying that a Mongolian without a horse is like a bird without wings. Nargulan loves practicing racing with his friends. Mongol horses are fast. They can run up to 30 miles an hour. There's plenty of space for these friends to ride since Mongolia's countryside is so vast. It's race day and some pretty bad weather rolled in. But this won't stop the Mongolian people from their Nadam horse race. The riders and horses are very used to these harsh conditions. Nargulan is in his gear, getting ready. A family friend is helping him put on his safety equipment. Not long ago, riders raced without helmets or any kind of protective gear. Today, people want these young riders to be safe. So there are rules that say every rider has to have a helmet and padding. Outside, it's cold and windy. Everyone works together to load the horses. They reach the race site a few miles away. Despite the rain and sleet, many people from the community have shown up to watch the race. The first race is on, and it's a long one. The weather didn't slow down these horses. Ah! 
Nagulan and Kolon got off to a slower start, so they do their best to catch up. The first race is over. They finished quite a bit behind, but he has another race coming up right away. Next race is on. It's a good start this time. And they're in the front of the pack. Isn't it amazing how God made horses able to carry people while going so fast? And for so long, both horse and rider have to trust each other and work as a team. They pass some riders and are one of the leaders. As the racers get towards the finish, they're at the front of the pack and finish with the top racers. Nargulan gets an award for being one of the top finishers. The land that Nargulan and his friends get to ride through may be vast, but God's creation and love for you are far greater. It's endless. So what did you think? I have a few questions that you can discuss with your family about the video that you just watched. So take some time to think about these right now. The first question is this. What happened to Narcolon in the first race? Was he successful? And then what did he do about it? Did he try again or did he give up? You can talk about that with your family. The next question is, what are some of the challenges that Nargalan faced each time that he was racing? Discuss some things and difficulties that he may have faced. How are these difficulties similar or different from your own difficulties? So some of the things you may have talked about were the difficulties that Nargalan was facing. He had to deal with bad weather, right? He had to deal with the difficulty of making his horse go faster than all the other horses. He had to go a long distance. And he was tired because he already ran one race before that. He was competing against many other people. And this was a real challenge for him. But he kept trying and he worked hard. And God was with him throughout this difficulty and challenge. God is with you too when you face challenges. Maybe it's helping your parents with something that you're not really enjoying, or maybe it's a difficulty in your homework, or something you don't understand. The Bible teaches us that God is with us through all our difficulties, and that the difficulties we face today are nothing compared to the love of God and the glory that's going to come one day through Jesus. And we'll talk more about that glory when we get to celebrate Easter next Sunday. But for now, I want you to think about these words from the book of Romans. Paul says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. That glory, of course, is our salvation through Jesus when he died on the cross and rose from the dead to save us from all sin. Sometimes, though, we need to be patient and stay strong, knowing that God is with us through these difficulties. We can have our hope in Jesus. Paul also writes, For in this hope, that's our salvation, we were saved. Now hope that is, is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So this week, I ask that you be patient with one another, patient with the difficulties that you're facing, and wait until the glory of God is revealed and we can celebrate together on Easter. Be sure to tune in on Thursday and Friday this week as we have special messages and some fun activities you can do at home to celebrate Holy Week. See you Thursday.